High school football from across the desert southwest is here. Varsity Blitz starts right now. We want to be league champions every year, and that's you know a goal that we set at the beginning of the year: be the league champion, win the Bell game, go to the go deep in the playoff. It's one of those years we're going to target our back. We still have a lot to prove as a as a group. Good evening and welcome to week 11 of the Varsity Blitz alongside Luis Lopez. I'm Scott Gross. A big week in prep football, especially in the Imperial Valley, as we just heard from both coaches involved in tonight's Bell game. Yeah, it's the 78th annual Bell game between Brawley and Central. While Brawley holds the overall series lead, Central has won the last four, Scott. <laughs> Three of which include Imperial League championships. Also, Central head coach Rookie Pena has never lost a Bell game or lost to Brawley. And here's a fun fact, uh, Brawley head coach John Self used to coach rookie back in the day. <laughs> well, these two IBL powers have no love loss for one another in the latest chapter of this long-standing rivalry saga going down at Cal Jones Field. First drive of the game, Brawley comes out on fire. Running back Isaiah Young gets the rock and gashes the Spartans defense for a 25-yard run. Cats running the ball at will early on, and it would lead to this. Young finds a seam, rips his way into the end zone. Brawley making an early statement on the road, wanting to get the bell back. 7-0 Cat. Central's first possession. Damian Rodriguez finds wideout Skylar Cook on an inside slant plank and then first down. Then a disaster for Central. Rodriguez on the quarterback keeper. He fumbles the football while being brought down. A big Anthony Ariaga is there to pounce on the ball. Cats have momentum, but it was still would shift the other way very quickly. Ethan Gutierrez tries downfield, but he's picked off by Joel Gonzalez Valdez, who takes it the other way for 23 yards. The Spartans fans, the Cal Jones going nuts. Ensuing drive, Rodriguez rolls to the right, goes deep for freshman sensation Sergio Garcia. Bubba, they call him, who makes a diving catch at the Wildcats' five-yard line. Spartans knocking on the door. Very next play, off the Wildcat formation, running back Charlie Sullivan. Hey, Charlie, powers his way into the end zone, tying the game at 7. Central would take a 14-7 lead to the half. Guess what? Brawley goes on to take the Bell game, winning 34-21. It's their first Bell game win since 2016. Hey, not the only rivalry game going on out there. Over to Calexico, where the Bulldogs took on the Vincent Memorial Scots. Bragging rights on the line in this one as these, as these two teams fight in the battle of the border, starting the first quarter. First drive of the game for the Bulldogs, and it's running back Ernesto Sanchez as he takes this one upfield for 15 yards and a Bulldog first down. Big season for Sanchez, and it continues there. Big earn. Later in the drive now, fourth down for Calexico. Senior quarterback Abram Zazueta rolls out to his right and fires it to whiteout Andrew Rivera. Hey, if it's a rivalry, who needs punting? Bulldogs get 10 yards on the play. Just a few plays later now, Bulldogs in the red zone and Zazueta keeps it himself and takes it in for the touchdown. Nine yards on the run for the senior there. Extra point would be blocked, however, so Bulldogs go up 6-0. Following drive for Vincent Memorial, senior quarterback Akobo Elias drops back, launches this one up, but his receiver can't come down with it. Scotts would later be forced to punt on the drive. First play of the second quarter for Calexico now, and it's Sanchez taking the handoff here and punching it in from 15 yards out to extend the Bulldog lead to 12. Now, of course, Calexico wanting to make up for that missed extra point from earlier, so they give it back to Sanchez on the two-point conversion and make it 14-0 in the second quarter. Bulldogs with their first ever win in the Battle of the Border. They take this one 34-30. And now we take you out to Shimamoto Simpson Stadium for the regular season finale in the Imperial Valley. The Tigers and Eagles both wanting to end on a high note in this one. The Eagles with the ball first. Here's Logan Jungers in the shotgun and he finds Nate Smith on the sideline who cuts it back to the middle for a very nice game there. And as you're going to see over here on this next play, now it's Jungers handing it off this time to Estevan McDonough before he is met by a sea of red for a short game. Eagles would end up having to punt it away on that drive. Over on Imperial's first drive, Reese Vindiola finds Jesse Nichols right by the sideline for a nice game, but he's met immediately by Nate Rodriguez for Southwest. Just a few plays later, it's Vindiola back to throw again, and this time he connects with Dominic Suarez to set the Tigers up first and goal inside the 10, and that would lead to this very next play right here. Handoff out of the shotgun to Seth Shaw and the junior drives across the goal line for six. Tigers strike first and they would not look back. Tigers go on to win this one 28-7 to beat the Eagles for the fourth straight time and tenth time in 11 meters. We now bring you the 2021 edition of the Axe Game. Highlights from Thursday night as we take you to Veterans Field in Calipat with both teams engaged 
and ready to play for the coveted axe opening kickoff. Calipatria gambling right out of the gate. Watch this. What's what they're going to happen? There's the axe. Here's the gamble. It's an onside kick recovered by the Hornets. Yeah, fantastic job. Early second quarter, it's going to be Holtville's offense coming alive right here. Yeah, watch as Donovan Johnston gets the call. Takes it to the outside for a five-yard scamper. Nice run by the water bug. Vikings would make the two-point conversion, taking the 8-0 lead. Next, Vikes possession. Johnston this time patiently lets his O-line open up his lane. Cuts through, turns on the afterburners. He is loose. A 37-yard touchdown run, his second of the night. Tack on the two-point conversion, 16-0 Vikings. Late in the first half, Hornets driving. Jacob Zendejas connects with one of his famous wideouts for a gain of several yards. That's a layal. He extends to get the first down and move the chain. Just a couple of plays later, Zendejas passes out to the flat, picked out by Peyton Eiton, who dodges a couple tackles and is off to the races. Eiton with a 70-yard pick six. The Vikes go on into halftime, 24-0. They would continue to dominate the Hornets the rest of the way, securing the 43-0 win and keeping the ax in Holtville. All right, Scott. Well, that'll do it for the first half of the show, but don't go anywhere. We've got the Yuma area games coming right up, including a crosstown rivalry you won't want to miss. We're taking a water break. We'll be right back. Stick with us. You're watching Varsity Blitz on 13 on your side. <laughs> New Hondas are going fast. So if you want one, hurry to your Honda dealer and get yours before someone else does. Now's your chance to have fun this fall in a new Honda. So get to your Honda dealer and get yours before they're all gone. See your Southwest Desert Honda dealer today. Did you know breast cancer kills more than 41,000 people every year in the U.S.? That's 113 people every day. That's unacceptable. African American women die from breast cancer nearly 41% more than Caucasian women. That's unacceptable. Nearly 250,000 men and women in the U.S. will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. That's unacceptable. Breast cancer is the leading cause of all cancer deaths for Hispanic women. Breast cancer is unacceptable. 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 Help us save lives. Together with Susan G. Komen, we're committed to reducing U.S. breast cancer deaths by half. And we're going to do it by 2026. Support Susan G. Komen. Join our fight. Save lives. Visit Komen.org slash unacceptable. Failure is unacceptable. Everybody has a flashlight. But can your flashlight do this? The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. The Bell & Howell Tack Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. Look. This civilian flashlight puts out pathetic light. But our military-grade tack light, that's 22 times as bright. It's so bright, it can be seen up to two nautical miles away. Only a tack light has a super bright strobe that can stun and disorient would-be attackers. A car battery will stop working in sub-zero temperatures. But even getting frozen in a block of ice couldn't make our tack light stop working. It's tough enough to survive getting run over by a Humvee. Try that with a regular flashlight. You can get a Bell & Howell Tack Light complete with a lifetime guarantee for just $19.99 plus free shipping. And while supplies last, you can even get a second one. Just pay a separate fee. To order, call 1-800-369-0338. That's 1-800-369-0338 or go to trytacklight.com. You're watching Varsity Blitz. The best highlights, the best plays, continuing right now. love that one yeah that's a good one that's a good one can't knock it welcome back to the varsity blitz we now turn our attention to the yuma schools and we start with a crosstown rivalry between kofa and cibola not sure we can call it a rivalry it's been over a decade since kofa had the upper hand over cibola kofa still looking for their first win of the season and actually they have a current losing streak of over 30 games in a row let's see what happened tonight <laughs> To Irv Palak Field, the Kofa Kings looking for their first win of the year against Crosstown rival Cibola, a team they haven't beaten, like I said, in over a decade. First play of the game, Cibola quarterback Andre Acosta throws a swing pass to the right to Tevin Millor, and 
Miller races to the sideline, adds a little stop and go, whoop, slashes ahead for 10 more yards, and the first down. Two plays later, Acosta rolls to his right. He has two options and chooses to go short to the big fella, Alonzo Quintero, who makes his way into your screen for the score. After the extra points, the bull up 7-0. After a Kofa punt, it's the bull is Acosta again. He rolls to the right again, sets up and fires deep to find wide open Seth Rodriguez. The junior scores from 55 yards out. Raiders up 13-0 early. Kofa, however, would find some success. There's the band celebrating the Raiders. Next drive, Leo Koivu avoids pressure, throws a left-handed pass to Eddie Garcia, and Garcia breaks a tackle, makes a nice move. The big fella is tackled after a gain of 20 in the first down. Next play, Kofa's Ashton Garola smashes ahead for a gain of six. Kofa's drive would stall due to penalties. And Kofa's next drive, Koivu with an ill-advised pass, picked off by Cebola's Adrian Montoya. And he takes it back to the house. A 50-yard pick six. Cebola goes on to win tonight by a score of 48 to 13. All right, over to the Gila Valley at Veterans Memorial Stadium for the Hawks' final home game of the season. Looking to build off of the one and only win under Jessica Slaughter against the Peoria Panthers. Hawks with the ball first. And on the first play from scrimmage, Brock Rogers zips it over the middle to Jonathan Noriega, who grabs the first down and more to move the chains. But two fumbled snaps would stall the drive after forcing a punt. The Hawks would start on their own one yard line, but watch this. Rogers looks for Jacob Arcides, who takes a huge hit, but the ball pops right into the arms of Noriega for some breathing room. But the Hawks would punt again. The Panthers now knocking on the doorstep, and the handoff goes to Cameron Mack. And like a Mack truck, bulldozes through the line and whoop! Si steps past one more guy and dials in a house call for six. Extra point makes a seven nothing on the next drive. Third down for Rogers trying to sling it downfield, but goes right into the arms of Cameron Mack. Playing both sides of the ball and he takes it all the way inside the 10 yard line. Panthers could not capitalize, however. Hawks defense comes up huge here as Peoria's Sebastian Carrillo gets pressure and that's Ray Gibson with the sack. Ball comes out, Austin Boback hops on it and the Hawks get the ball back. And that leads to this. Rodgers floats it over to Michael Galaz. He reels it in out of the backfield, gets a block, and off he goes. Even our cameraman tripped up by the ref, and he recovers, follows Galaz all the way in for a 47-yard touchdown. Big answer for the Hawks there, but they fall in this one in the end. This game going 49-20. to Let's take you down to our out-of-town scoreboard. We had the uh, battle at the border. Uh, uh, there it is, Vincent Memorial in Calexico. In Calexico, for the first time since the battle was started in 2017, the Bulldogs finally get the win. Yeah, and then Brawley winning their first IVL title since 2016. Just an absolutely huge win over Central. I think we all knew that that was going to be kind of the game of the week coming into this one. So I'm sure Brawley very happy to see that one with a win. More out-of-town scoreboard. There you saw Gila Ridge. You just had the, uh, the highlight. Uh, San Pasqual was canceled tonight due to COVID. Uh, Yuma. 10-10, uh, actually they lost. Yuma lost to Vista Grande by a score of 28-20, another close game. Yuma Catholic also rolls. And one more, we've got Antelope winning big. That was a big win for Antelope. And yeah. Imperial, as we showed you over Southwest. It's now time for today's best. Yes. Absolutely. Huge thanks to Marina, Omar, and George, our directors in our booth. You can see Omar right there pushing all the right buttons. Big thank you to Cole Johnson, Adonis Albright, Adam Klepp, helping with scores, Wiley Jahari, Vinci Barra, uh, so many people that help. Uh, Jonathan Busco with graphics, Lisa Sturgis, and Marcus, and Caleb with the web. Yeah, Scott, as always, team effort. These teams, each and every week, you know, they have their own setup. We have our own team here at 13 on your side. And again, really, no one else we'd rather do this with. Playoffs next week in the Valley. Join us next week for week 12 of the.